Hi. I'm going to be reading from Deuteronomy 13, uh, 6 through 11, from the W.E.B. If your brother, son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is as your own soul, entice you secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, you nor your fathers, of the gods of the peoples who are round about you, near to you, or far off from you, from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him, nor listen to him, Neither shall your eye pity him, neither shall you spare him, neither shall you conceal him, but you shall surely kill him. <laughs> your hand shall be the first on him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. You shall stone him to death with stones, because he has sought to draw you away from Yahweh your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All Israel shall hear and fear, and shall not do any more such wickedness as this is in the midst of you. Woo! If your daughter asked you to worship a God other than the God who said this, would you kill her? Wait, that's probably not the right question to ask. To answer that, you'd have to think. Would you have the heart? Uh, would you have the guts? Did you really hear your God correctly? The better question is, if your God told you to kill your daughter because she enticed you to worship a God other than Yahweh, should you kill her? That's a much easier question, isn't it? And then you don't have to think at all. I know, I know, he'd never tell you to do that, right? But he did. I just read it to you. Um, maybe not you specifically, but he told somebody, bunches of somebodies. That, and that's all that counts. It might as well have been you. I mean, it was a human being just like you, trying to follow the same horrible God you follow. So now, my question is, should you have done it? And you can answer only one way if you're a follower of the God of Israel, you don't have a choice but to say, yes, I should have, and I should. Murder my own child if my God told me or tells me to do it. And we know you'd feel proud about it if you managed to be despicable enough to murder your daughter. You know that because you praise the faithful Abraham for being willing to murder his son. And that was even when his son hadn't tried to convince him to go whoring after other gods. His son hadn't done a thing to provoke anyone's murder of him. So yes, you should not only murder for Yahweh, but you should murder your own flesh and blood for Yahweh. You know that. It's not up for debate. So don't try to deny it or you'll be denying your holy book. You would happily, or you think you should happily, Murder your babies for the God of Israel. Now, remember, in your mind, those other gods mentioned in the Bible didn't really exist. Moloch wasn't real. Baal wasn't real. Ashtoreth wasn't real. Shemesh wasn't real. Yam wasn't real. Your God told you to murder anybody who suggested to you to go and worship a figment of your imagination. <laughs> or a figment of Yahweh's, who knows? But while you think these other gods of the Bible weren't real, you, you do believe in the God of this world. You believe in Satan or Lucifer or Beelzebub or whatever you happen to call him. You think he's a real God. That means, of course, that you don't believe in only one God. I mean, you believe in the Father, Yahweh. You believe in the Son, Jesus. You, and you believe in the wife, Sophia, or Holy Spirit, or Shekinah, or whatever you call the third member of the Godhead. And you believe in the devil or Satan, who's also a very powerful God. You believe in at least four gods, but not the ones mentioned in the Old Testament who fought with Yahweh. They weren't real. Uh, he, Yahweh was just doing some kind of spiritual beatboxing with them. 
So in reality, Yahweh told his people to murder their child if the child worships Satan. He's the only other true God there could be, according to your thinking. Now remember, all you have to do to worship Satan is not worship Yahweh, or not do exactly as Yahweh says. In fact, if Yahweh tells you to murder your child and you don't, you yourself are worshiping Satan. Remember that when Ananias and Sapphira lied to Peter and he claimed they were lying to the Holy Spirit, they were struck dead. And this was during what you like to call the Christian dispensation. This is not from the Old Testament. Granted, Yahweh killed this couple himself and didn't insist that Peter kill him, but that's really beside the point. Yahweh thought, Peter thought, and you think, that dying is a just punishment for telling a lie. So if in this dispensation, death was a good response to a lie, then death should be a good response if somebody tries to get you to lie or get you to do something else to offend Yahweh. After all, the wages of any sin is death. It is therefore not beyond reason that your God would suggest to you that you murder your daughter. After all, your daughter might drag you over to the Dark Lord's side. Or she might entice other ones of your children to join up with Satan. When Princess Diana died, a Christian said to me that maybe it wasn't such a bad thing because Diana had a lot of influence on people and she was influencing them away from Yahweh, away from what was good and holy. And you Christians are fine with the murder of, you know, leaders in other countries when the leaders attack one another, or, well, especially if they attack people in our own country. So don't act like you're against killing. You're not. And, and I would think the very best reason to kill, based on what I read in your book, would be to kill someone trying to get you to do something you always doesn't like, to get you to serve Satan. Whether that's Saddam Hussein or Princess Diana or your daughter doesn't matter. And again, serving Satan is not drinking blood or, or bowing down and saying, Hail Satan. <laughs> That's more Christian behavior than satanic behavior. Serving Satan, again, is doing anything Yahweh doesn't like. So, let's suppose one Saturday night, your daughter suggests you go to the bar and get fallen down drunk. And let's suppose your God tells you to kill her. Should you? And again, please don't say it wouldn't say such a thing. He has already said it. Whether it was to you or not doesn't make a hill of beans difference. You understand that, right? Your God authorized murder as a response to your child's suggestion that you disobey him. You represent all the followers of Yahweh from beginning to end. His words don't just disappear into thin air. This is your God. This is the God you serve. This is who he is. He's the God who says, murder for me. And you want to please him and receive a reward from him. Think you should murder for him if he requests that of you. Or, as some apparently did when Princess Diana died, you think it's fine to rejoice when Yahweh does the killing himself or someone else does it. As you rejoice over the deaths of Ananias and Sapphira. That was a good thing, right? And when I wrote that down to share with you, I was so disgusted I threw up a little bit in my mouth. You have such a strong desire to go to a place you've never been, to meet a being you don't really know, and live a life you have no idea will materialize or, or will be pleasing to you, that you think it's good and proper and holy to murder your own daughter in order to get to that place and adore that monster who threatens you if you don't make it there. And, and I threw up a little bit more when I wrote that. You approve of the murder of your daughter. You approve when you declare the murder of someone else's daughter to be righteous and holy, which you do. 
So don't you dare stand in my face and pretend you have some kind of wonderful morals that I don't have. Don't you dare. Because <clears throat> let me tell you, unless I completely lose my mind, I will never state, as you must if you're a Christian, that I would be willing to murder my own child to please some vengeful overlord. And by the way, if you ask me, he is the real dark lord. Oh, you think you're living on some high plane of righteousness. I know that. You, you present yourself as a paragon of virtue. You quote Bible passages and raise your hands and sway back and forth as, as if you're straight out of heaven. And no wonder for even Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Before I hush today, I want to talk about why I now have Patreon. A friend of mine, Tim Mills, wrote and asked me if I had it. I said, do you think people would donate to me? And he responded by saying, I would. Well, that's a huge honor to me. And I appreciate it more than I can say. So thank you, Tim. And if you don't know Tim, he's the Harmonic Atheist. And I'll put the link to his uh, YouTube channel in the description. Tim has more than 6,000 subscribers. And he presents wonderful interviews with people from all different faith backgrounds. And Tim is kind. He's, he's intelligent. He's humble. He's someone with amazing integrity. I, I really can't say enough good about Tim. Man. Tim. <laughs> so if you don't know him, please check him out. You won't be sorry. And I just want to say that I appreciate all the support you give me, whether you subscribe, watch my videos, comment, follow me on Facebook or whatever. I'm deeply grateful. You encourage me and you inspire me and you give me reason to keep writing and making these videos. So thank you all. And thank you for watching. Bye.